Today, three pair of base coats will be put brush to brush to brush in a series of vigorous tests that will push them to their limits. I'm really just going to be comparing them, but that was my clickbait version. Hello, hello everyone. How the heck's it going? For me, it is going wonderfully because I finally finished my research and testing on several peel-off base coats to compare to Coco and Claire's. So today I will share with you my findings. I've been meaning to get this video out for a thousand years, but I really wanted to do extensive testing with these and not push it out prematurely. I'll be the first to admit that gel peel-off base coats can be... <laughs> super finicky, but we do ask a lot from them. We need them to hold on tight, but let go easily. We want them to save us time, but not cost us too much money. So let's make like Hannah and see if we can not find the best of both worlds. After the comparison, I will jump into some troubleshooting tips if you've tried to peel off base and it's just not working out for you. Throughout the video, I'll be referring to methods one through three, and this is in reference to my peel off base tutorial. So if you have not seen that, I will link that above and below so you can check that out so you know what the heck I'm blathering on about. I would also like to point out right off the bat that this Orly Easy Off Base is not a peel off base coat. I had a few questions about this, so I thought I'd get that out of the way. It is just a base coat that is designed to soak off quicker in acetone than their regular base coat. With all that out of the way, I settled on these three for today's video. We have the least expensive option from a cart coming in at $10 US and $15 Canadian, and I'll be comparing it to my tried and true Coco and Claire peel base that goes for around $18 US or $24 Canadian on the Coco and Claire site. I did recently find out it's also on sale at Flora Nail Shop for $14 US and $19 Canadian, so you can get a little bit of savings there. Finally, I have Daily Charms priced at $22.50 US and $29 Canadian. It's time to find out if twice the price means twice as good. I've done my best to compile a list of everywhere you can buy each of these and those will all be linked in the description below. McCart's base comes with a set of very unclear instructions but a very clear set of warnings. This base is a little runnier than I would like it to be. I kind of had to do a little bit of chasing and it did kind of flood my cuticles a bit, but it wasn't too bad. I guess confusion is a bit of a theme among peel off bases because the Coco and Claire one is also a little bit interesting because on their site it's just called base, but it is in fact a peel off base. Either way, it is a very nice, thick consistency, it stays where you put it, and it has a really nice clear brush. Daily Charm is the one with the super weird nugget brush, but actually once you start to use it, it's a pretty cool little thing. I honestly might like this brush the most. The Daily Charm base is also quite thick and easy to apply. Wear time is a bit of a weird thing to score with peel-off bases because if it doesn't peel off, it means diddly squat if it lasted for four years. That's why a bunch of red flags were waving around in my head when I was trying the McCart one. I had zero issues with lifting within their respective time frames, and then past that, still no issues with lifting. I was starting to get worried that these puppies were gonna hang on for dear life. My fears were confirmed during my soak off process. I had to soak for twice as long as I usually do, and even then they only barely started to budge. I soaked until I was wrinklier than a grandmother raisin, and even then trying to separate these was like trying to remove myself from a box of Oreos. Nearly impossible. And on the ones where I used method 3, the peel off base was so stuck that it pulled up the regular base coat off of my nail, so... <laughs> I have actually had regular base coats that have removed easier than this peel off one. It was a similarly sad tale with the Daily Charm base, unfortunately. This is another one where you do not want to do any sort of prep at all or it will just not come off. The Daily Charm one also pulled up the regular gel base coat with it and plenty of my nail to boot. Coco and Claire is the one I used in my tutorial video, so my wear times were exactly as stated in that video. 
I'm actually really disappointed in this experiment. I wanted to find a cheaper alternative or even just an alternative in general for those that don't have access to the Coco one or maybe it's just out of their price range. Honestly, the more I try, the more I realize that my peel off base method is more of just a Coco and Claire base method. It seems pricey up front, but if you're anything like me, the Coco and Claire base is definitely worth the money. Being able to cut my removal time from an hour to like 15 minutes is huge. Not only is it quicker, but it is easier on my skin and my nails. No more filing or over filing or soaking in acetone and having crusty skin. Plus, I like to do a lot of art on my nails, so it always felt so heartbreaking to have to clip them off. And I like that I get to keep and display them now. I think Daily Charm is only worth looking into if you're interested in method three or have tried it and just really hate applying the extra gel base under the peel base. This is definitely one you're gonna have to wear down a bit before it's ready to come off. So if you're looking for a quick turnaround, this one's probably not for you. The other drawback to the Daily Charm one is that you have way less control over your wear time. Sometimes with the Coco one, I only want them for a weekend, so I just do less prep. And if I want them to last closer to two weeks, then I just do more. This one is kind of a one note base. There is only one way to apply it that it will remove it all. I hate to say it, but McCart seems like a no in every way. It literally did not peel off at all. It just felt like a regular base coat. So I can't really give it any points. At this point, I should be hired by Coco and Claire for how much I blather on about their base. But honestly, nothing even compares. So maybe you've tried a peel off base and uh, didn't turn out so well for you. Here are some of the most common issues that people have when trying it out for the first time. Hopefully one of these answers your questions. Many people assume that the biggest issue with peel off base is that they're gonna pop off prematurely, but uh, in fact, it's kind of the opposite with gel ones at least. So even if you think you want at least two weeks wear out of your sets, I'd recommend maybe experimenting with methods one or two first, just so you don't apply too much adhesion and have a heck of a time trying to get them off. If you try these ones and then your nails are coming off before you want them to, then you can bump up a level. This will save you from a lot of potential damage like I caused myself today. This tip is especially applicable to bases that are not Coco and Claire, evidently. I have also made a video talking about removal tips, so I will link that one in the corner as well if you want to check that out if you think that your nails are just taking forever to soak off. If you're still having issues, try adding some dish soap or oil to the hot water you're soaking in, and it should speed up the process a little bit. That, or maybe you just need to step down a method like if you're using method three, maybe try out method two because it might work just as well for you. If you're using method three and your nails are still coming off before you want them to, check for one thing. Is your nail left bare or is there still gel on it? If it is totally bare, the problem is your prep and not the peel base. If there is gel on your nail, check for one thing. Is the peel base left on your nail or is it on the underside of the tip? Whichever it is, apply a layer of primer between whichever layer is separated next time you go to apply them. This has solved pop-offs entirely for me. At the end of the day, some brands just are incompatible. Try switching up some of the products you're using and maybe you'll have better results. If there's something here that you wanted to know that I didn't answer, be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. But that is all for today's video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to hang out with me again. Also, again, let me know if there is any other peel-off base that you know of that you want me to try. I considered revealing this peel-off base coat, but I couldn't find any information about the ingredients or the company. So to say I was hesitant to put that near my very sensitive skin is an understatement. I have also looked into the Madame Glam one, but I was really looking for more of a budget option. But if you're interested in seeing a review on it, I will definitely pick one up. Throw it out. I don't know. I don't know.
Tchau.